I think we're live. Hey guys, how's it going? Happy to see you all. I think we're like already 48 people. That's pretty cool. Thank you for attending this live session. Um, I have a very special guest for you That's and you cool. probably Thank know him. Uh, oh, I need to bring down my iPad. I'm actually watching the stream as I uh, do it. So um, anyways, Dom Sigalas, the voice of wisdom, is with me today. So let let, uh, ha, let 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 us have Dom with us. There you go, Dom. How's it going, my friend? Good to see you again. Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's exciting to chat with you again. We did that live uh, session last uh, spring, I believe, the first time we had the uh, this type of live stream. And so it's it's very Thanks cool wise. to have you back. Thanks for having me, man. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, we have a good reason this time to. We uh, could not I, do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we, we do. Could not, not do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, again, welcome you all to this live stream. Um, let's talk Cubase. Let's talk mixing, production, what we do in uh, in Cubase, why we use Cubase, me and Dom. And I also want to know who's uh, who actually purchased the new Cubase 11, because a week ago, Cubase 11 came out, as you all know, unless you were on a trip to Mars or something and you didn't catch this one up. Yeah, Cubase 11 is out. So let me know in the chat how many of you um, has got the new version of Cubase and uh, if you have any thoughts. Also, of course, leave your questions because this is like a live stream that we dedicate to you, to you all. So we, we're here to, uh, to answer your questions, mixing, uh, production, Cubase, you know, whatever you have in mind. All right, Dom, so let's awesome. uh, start this one up. Uh, so I have uh, Paul who is asking, uh, hi, Chris and Dom, thanks for doing this. A couple uh, a couple to get you started, Chris. Uh, will you need to change your templates both? Uh, what, are, uh, what other general changes would you recommend? So this is um, concerning the upgrade to Cubase 11. Um, now I'm gonna say uh, changing my templates. No, I just uh, transfer my templates over, the one I wanna keep. Uh, by just uh, using the, um, uh, th there's the, uh, I'm on Windows and uh, you can go down, let me check here, um, is the user preferences, uh, there's so many things here, my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting lost. Okay, you go under your Cubase 10.5, if that was the version you, you had uh, before, and then you open the user settings data folder. Let me just share that with you on the screen. There you go. So that is the folder itself, uh, Cubase 10.5, and uh, the only thing you need to do is just to transfer all of your templates that are stored right here. Um, and then you just go one step back and you will have access to your Cubase 11 folder and you just copy them over. That's it. That's and normally all you need to do. Normally transfers the settings, right? Normally Sorry? transfers the, it normally tra transfers the uh, templates anyway. So oh, but it didn't. Upgrade. It didn't on my end. I, I needed really? to. Really? Uh, yeah, no, it didn't. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, all my preferences also I needed to. Uh, I'm to transfer, checking uh, just to, just to be sure as well. Yeah, it did on mine. Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, so this is basically what you need uh, you need to do. Uh, let's go to the next one. Is there any improvement regarding the logical editor? Yes, yes, there are some cool improvements when it comes to the logical editor, especially when it comes to selecting notes. I think that now you can basically take the notes that you have inside your MIDI part and say, okay, I want just to remove the top uh, voices, uh, or you can do some really interesting voicing stuff. If you check the new presets, uh, you will find uh, some really cool things that you can do. And of course, this allows you to create presets because I think there are new conditions that they added in there. So, you know, the if, then, you know, then they added even more options when it comes to this. So this is, uh, uh, really cool. If you're using the logical editor a lot, John. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, use it yeah. a lot, uh, Dom? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I create I create macros basically, and uh, what I do is I say, okay, I, you know what I like uh, 
maybe I'll do a video about this. You know, one thing that I like with the logical editors, you can say, okay, I have uh, done all this uh, arrangement and I have all these instrument tracks and then I save the project and then I want to start a new project where I bounce everything down with a rendering place function and everything okay. else, like all the instrument tracks are still there and they're just taking space and they take CPU and they take, you know, all these things. So sometimes what I do is I use the logical editor and say, okay, delete all instrument tracks. And if you have nice. a project that's like 300 tracks, yeah. you know how important that is. It uh, is. So this is one of the, um, uh, you like know, this. another thing that you can do that I like a lot if you're working with an artist or if you're working with somebody that, uh, you know, um, for example, let's say you have uh, some percussion that you recorded from a very cool percussionist and then you want to basically name the files um, according to, like, mm -hmm. add his name at the mm -hmm. track header, you know, the track name. You can do this with the logical editor. You can say, okay, all the tracks that are inside the percussion, you know, category adds whatever the name of the That's musician cool. is. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. It's, yeah, it's complicated, but it's cool. Yeah, I need to dive way more into the logical editor, something that I've been... I've not been doing much, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, let's go with... Um... Oh, and by the way, uh, Jean-François Léger just asked the question. Is a guy from Montreal, so... Salut à toi. All right, uh, next we have... Uh, Eero, that is saying hi. I don't know if you know her. Um... Hello, Eero. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next, what do we have? Uh, let me go down here. Okay, so we have Indian Bones 007. Hi, from Scotland. Hello, my friend. I'm doing the mixdown mixing course just now. I'm using Superior Drummer 3. Any tips when gain staging these drums? Um, yeah, I, I would try to gain stage that right away from the um, the VST instrument itself before bouncing everything in audio. This is something that I always do when I when I mix uh, music. I tend to just bounce all the audio, uh, all the MIDI into audio. So, so that would be the same for drums. I would just bounce all the tracks. I actually made a video on that maybe a month ago on how you can do this with Groove Agent, um, and th the same applies for uh, for Superior Drummer and other uh, VST instruments where you can just bounce all the uh, the channels if you route them properly within the VST itself you can then just bounce them into audio and you can gain stage from you know this uh, uh, this end if you want when the uh, everything is in audio or you can do it straight from the VST instrument by playing with the output of each channels um, just to bring that down a bit you know uh, just not to overload um, uh, your channel you know because usually with the VST instruments uh, everything is loud you know, they, they tend to, to bring the sounds at the max possible. Uh, so I always bring everything down a bit, you know, uh, just to, I, I don't never go super crazy with gain staging. I just want to have like a proper volume enough, you know, enough, enough uh, headroom to, to be able to mix and um, not overload my mix bus in the end, you know, in some plugins. Um, so this is what I would do. You know, I would actually mix those drums like I would for real acoustic drums. So I hope that helps. Anything you want to add, Dom? Yeah, apart from the fact that I think Superior Drummer has a neat feature as far as I know that um, it allows you to also just drop all the files straight from, from the interface, if I'm not mistaken. I have it, but I've never used this. Okay, I, um, I never worked with it, so I don't know. Uh, that, it's, that's cool. It's it's interesting. Just be, I would say I, in terms of game staging, just be careful when a Superior Drummer tends to have a lot of kits if you use the preset. Uh, where it has like already layers mm. on the snare, for example, or the kick drum. So there are some kind of Metallica Black Album type of drum kits where yeah. the kick drum, they have this kind of trigger, that thing. <laughs> and that can really create spikes on your yeah, uh, right. you know, drum bus. So they're, they're, sometimes they tend to be a little bit processed, even if it's not supposed to. So maybe just, you know, tame them a little bit, but yeah. Superior Dummer is cool, actually. I have to try it. I would love to uh, yeah, to get, put my hands on them. Um, okay, I have one for you, man. Will you suggest Cubase for post-recording work? Post-recording uh, work. Post-production, is that? Yeah, that's or? what I thought it was, it was saying, so that's why it was... 
uh, it Aiming is post production unless we have we 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 get the the you know uh, clarification um yeah absolutely uh, oh i i do this all the time i've i've worked on many studios where uh, we were doing like uh, tv commercials and uh, you know uh, films uh, and stuff like this and we were using cubase of course if you're planning to do this like 100% of your time or if you're really uh, serious about it i would really suggest you go new and though it's uh, it has way more features and uh, i haven't talked to my uh, about new and on my channel yet uh, but i think that for composers you can you can totally do everything in in cubase most of the stuff but then when you want to do adr and uh, you want to do like sound design and you want to go even deeper you want to mix an atmos open, yeah mix an atmos or and actually nuendo was just um, uh, you know announced uh, if you haven't seen that yeah, it's and on, yeah. uh, it's it's really good. The reconform function Nuendo is amazing. So if the director changes the cut for the film, it kind of puts everything back together. But I mean, for post production, for normal stuff, you know, Cubase is uh, let me put it this way, much better than some industry standard DAWs, in my opinion. <laughs> now I won't name. I won't. Yeah, I'm not calling names, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, ca I, I can't. I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say I do agree with you. <laughs> um, then we have <laughs> you guys. Definitely helped me uh, help my workflow in Cubase 10.5. You are welcome. Um, now, before we move forward, guys, you know I know that uh, it looks like we have like 132 people watching right now. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Please hit that like button, okay, and let your friends know that we are live at the moment by sharing the link, of course. Okay, next we have Scott, uh, who is just commenting about you know, he's been using C1, like Cubase 11, for um, for a bit, and it works great. So that's good. And uh, Cubase 11 is perfect for me, uh, for a film composer. That's awesome, because there's been an improvement also on the score editor. And again, this yeah. is something that I never use. You know, I'm not a, uh, yeah. a composer per se, so. Do it's you use cool. it, Dom? It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, use it. I mean, uh, like I said on my video, when I, uh, I like Dorico when it comes to scoring. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm, I used to use Sibelius back in the day and it, it's great. Uh, but now that, uh, you know, Cubase and Dorico are very integrated. They're part of the same ecosystem. You know, they use the same sounds and all these things. Uh, I use Dorico for like serious scoring when I do like orchestral stuff and everything. But I mean, the score editor in Cubase, it's it's not bad. It's it's actually pretty cool. And with the new features that they added, like you can say, okay, you know, when you play something, but depending on the sample, you tend to play longer or shorter durations. Uh, film composers will understand what I'm saying. You know, you play something longer and actually you want it to be notated right. Now you can do this with a score editor. You can say, okay, I'm going to, you know, this is like a, a quarter note instead of a quarter note and one sixteenth uh, note. It's, it, it, you know, it's just a sample. I just, uh, that's a performance element. But also, you know what else, Chris? The, the new markers and the new global tracks inside oh, the man, key yeah. editor, this, this is massive. That this I like. And just the incredible. fact that you can choose, you can choose from your, uh, your list is very, very cool. And and there are quite a few creative ways that I haven't dug into yet, but maybe, you know, let's say that you want to synchronize something like a vir virtual list. Let's say you want to, and I'm, done, I'm just thinking about this. Let's say you want to synchronize some uh, an, an electric bass with a sub bass that you created with a, a sub synth, you know, a retrolog. And you create the markers at the hit points, and then you go into the editor, and then you can see the hit points because the markers are there. Mm -hmm. Does anyone follow me, or I'm like, <laughs> just that makes sense only for me? But anyway, yeah. So, you know, it's very easy to synchronize things uh, with very high precision when it comes to media and audio. That's that's very cool. I'm just um, yeah thinking of ideas that you can use this. And there's a lot. Let me check who else <laughs> has a. <laughs> 
Oh, what about this one? Rob is asking, uh, I upgraded to 11 right away, but my Houston controller is not supported. Do you remember that controller, Dom? Yes, of course. Any comments uh, on that? Uh, That's an old one. It was I, back I, in I, I, yeah, I don't 05 have or news, something. I'm afraid. Uh, I think it's not lo lo no longer supported, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, which I is, would not uh, get my hopes too high on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that it's going to be supported uh, again. Uh, I think that some other controllers were were not uh, stopped being supported. Some Roland ones, like really old though. Like, I mean, you have to bear in mind, Cubase uh, was still supporting quite old legacy controllers for a long time, mm. and all these things with every new version. Uh, in order to maintain them and to make them work properly and uh, not have bugs, uh, that requires uh, like a serious amount of workload from the programmer. So I don't, I'm not surprised that some products that are like 20 years old get dropped off, you know, and, yeah. um, and same it's with how some, it is. Same with OS, like I think Windows 7 is no more supported with uh, Cubase 11, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Come on, yeah. At some point, you, you know. know. I've, you, you have to bite the bullet at some point. I was terrified <laughs> when I upgraded to 10, but it's it's okay. There are ways around the update system. If you Google around, it's not so hard. It's, yeah, it works but, well for me it's, anyways. It's, it's, uh, for me, it, the performance is much better than 7. So you know, it's, it, it's funny because for years, I've, uh, I worked on a Hackintosh. Um, and two years ago, I had to just, you know, uh, just a bad move uh, from myself. So I just had to uh, to reinstall everything on Windows, and I always thought of getting back on Mac, you know, and using uh, maybe building myself another Ma another Hackintosh, and that was my goal also with the new computer I just built a few months ago, and so I bought all the components supported for Hackintosh, and I just never uh, I just stayed on Windows, and I don't think I'm first of all it's time consuming <laughs> to build a Hackintosh, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's gonna yeah yeah bring me, you know, better workflow or anything. So Windows works well for me anyways. No complaints. That, I have it right here. That's my main my main computer and there you uh, go. I mean I'm I'm keeping my eyes on the the ARM processors and the new Macs, but I think that's going to take at least 2 or 3 years so that we can see what the actual mm. uh, real life performance is going to be for us that deal with real time audio. So yeah. Mine the Freak Music is asking, Hi Chris, I'm also a Cubase user. Right now I have a 10.5. Why would I need to update or upgrade to Cubase 11? Um, my answer to this is, uh, and I'm very going to be very honest, you don't have to. You know, it's uh, like for me, when you upgrade to a new version of your DAW or a plugin, or even when you purchase a plugin, um, just go according to your needs. You know, check the new features. If you think that those features are, are going to help your workflow, are going to help you out in your music production, um, do the move, upgrade. You know, if not, and you think it's not going to be useful for your needs, don't. That's my simple answer. So it's like, it's not a must to upgrade all the time. Um, it is a cool thing because you have like a bunch of new, very cool features. I, you know, like for me, those are actually useful, uh, especially when we talk about the new export option that we have. You know, the, the way that is uh, designed is like super cool. You know, exporting stems all at once is uh, just for that. Like for me, it's it's worth it. You know, but maybe it's not for you. So it's up to you to uh, to decide at this point. Then. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, we have Bruno. Tried to buy 11. Uh, told payment needs to be authorized manually, up to three working days to process, so waiting. Um, at this point, maybe get in touch with support. Um, that I am not sure how we can help. Dom, what processor do you use, man? Uh, that's easy. It's the same for Mac and PC. Oh, well, not really. <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. I have the Intel i9. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, it's the it's a nine nine one. Uh, I'll tell you exactly which one though, because you asked. Uh, let me see. Uh, come on. Why did they change everything on Windows Ten? 
<laughs> there I am moaning about Windows 10. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, seriously, but actually, hardware is very important to the performance. You know, if you have a more uh, updated computer, then Windows 10 are going to be amazing. But I have the i9 9900 3.6 gigahertz um, on Same this as I machine. Have. Yeah. Really nice, uh, but to be honest with you, compared to the i7 that I had previously, uh, I would expect a little bit more juice out of it. And uh, I have, I think that now uh, that you know the, the the Apple thing is a good move that they moved completely to their own processors because Intel has been completely dormant for so many years, like they were slow with uh, you know CPUs in my opinion. And I hope that now with AMD on the rise. And with Apple completely ditching them, I think they have to do some real work and give us some really good performance mm. when it comes to uh, CPU. Because a lot of people were commenting on my uh, my computer video uh, months ago about that I should I should have gone with AMD instead of Intel, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I don't know them very well, so you know. Tricky but, to answer. Many people had success with AMDs, and they're super happy, and they yeah. their systems run amazingly. But some like that's the problem with PCs; you can never know. Uh, some other people have problems, and with uh, some uh, specific applications, uh, they all the cores cannot be utilized, and uh, you know there are some uh, in incompatibilities and stuff like this. But I, I, from what I hear, many people are super happy with Horizons, and. Uh, I'm not brave enough yet. <laughs> yeah, same see. here. <laughs> same here. Yeah, I, I, I keep it safe. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Keith is asking, yes, Cubase 11 update installed. Um, a few problems at the moment. Media Bay crashes the program. Um, yeah, you know, every time a new version comes out, you know, s some people might have some bugs, you know, and stuff, you know, which are going to be fixed with uh, with some tiny updates. And usually Steinberg are pretty fast with the first update. They release that, you know, very quickly usually. Um, and, you know, like on my end, I don't have any problems. I know there's like minor things, you know, nothing serious, nothing that would stop me to, uh, to, um, to work with Cubase 11 anyways. Um, another friend of mine had some problem with one plugin, which is a third-party plugin, but this is this is what what happens when you uh, you have a new version. Stuff stuff happens, but it doesn't happen to everyone, and that's the funny thing. So it depends on your computer and a lot of different factors. Um, yeah, so the media bay. If I if I might jump very quickly, yeah, yeah, go ahead, if, man. If, if it might be like any help, uh, I'm not exactly what ha I'm not sure exactly what happens with media bay, and it's crashing it. Uh, but uh, what I found is that especially if you have installed a lot of things and you've uninstalled and you know your system is a little bit dirty you know if, if that makes sense uh, it might be a good idea to trash the uh, media bay file that lives inside the Cubase preferences uh, it's called media bay dot DB or something like this you don't have, uh, in, and it's safe. You don't have to delete it and completely get rid of it. Just place it somewhere else or rename it completely, and then Cubase will rebuild the database, mm. and that might solve your problem if that's your problem. But again, I'm, I cannot be a hundred percent sure. But whatever you do, don't delete anything. Just uh, and, and then <laughs> yeah. send me exactly <laughs> threatening What's emails. What's happening to my Cubase? Uh, yeah. No, just just put it somewhere else, and then if you know you you're not happy, put it back. That's what, all I'm saying. Good tip. It man. might help. You're not the voice of wisdom for nothing. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> with that thing that you did there. That was so funny. Man. So I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw, like, for, for the ones who saw my last video, I had like a, uh, I, j I just called Dom. I said, you know what? You, why don't you record? Can, can you record for me that one line? He said, yeah, sure. He sent me the, the file. It's a, he said, oh, I don't want to see anything. Just, you know, post whatever needs to be posted and I'll laugh <laughs> later. <laughs> That's what I did. So if you didn't watch that video, you know, it's my last one um, about my comparison of the Frequency 2 plugin and the FabFilter Pro Q3. Uh, go watch that video. And at some point in the video, I'm not going to tell you when, but you're going to see this um, this very good guy. A very good video, by the way. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I really liked it. 
Um, yeah, I kind of missed a few things though uh, 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 on the Fab Filter Pro Q3. Some like features that I just never paid attention to. Uh, I told um, in the video that they were not available and they were all the time, but it doesn't matter. The point was <laughs> dynamic EQ. So um, then what else do we have? Uh, Oh yeah, we're talking about um, the template, you know, the, the, the transferring the templates over to C11. Um, I had to do it manually. Key, uh, Scott, like you, Dom, um, everything was transferred automatically when upgrading to C11, which should be the case for most of you anyways. Um, and then, can you please explain how, to, uh, how we can use the new multicoloration meter and other supervision features? Ooh. <laughs> like you know, I'm I'm gonna have to say that supervision is quite cool as a plugin. I like it. I you know, now it's on, it's on my um, it's on my uh, straight in the uh, the insert of my control room. It's there. Hold on, it's 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 right here all the time. Oh, you can't see it. Hold on, <laughs> it's it's right here all the time. I put it let out of focus. Check if I, yeah. Let me check if I can. Uh, do I have a? I think I have a project open. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let me share Man, that I, with you. I was so happy when I saw that plugin. I was, I, I was, uh, I couldn't believe it. It, it. For me, it's such a life change uh, thing. You know, uh, it's uh, it's amazing. And it's uh, very well done. Uh, you know how much money I spent on meters? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me how many meters you have. Uh, oh. Okay. So. I have the Clarity M, which is the hardware. It's it's this one right here. Okay. Um, I have the uh, Waves. I have uh, the um, Isotope ones. I have well, well, to be honest with you, Cubase had quite a quite a few already, so it saved me quite a bit of money. But. Um, uh, <laughs> No, nope, I, I think I lost music. you for a bit. I think I lost you. Yeah. Were you hearing the music? You weren't supposed to. Yeah, 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 yeah. All good. Yeah, I think it's mono, isn't it? I think on Streamyard it's, uh, it turns out mono. But anyway, so that is uh, supervision for for those who uh, who are wondering. I think we're seeing your uh, your browser, Chris. Oh, okay. Am I? Oh, uh, uh, or is it that. just me? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, you're seeing my browser now. That is a fail. Okay, so this is not going to work. So let me just bring that back. All right. Sorry about that. So <laughs> let me try that again. But yeah, supervision is like, I, I really like what, you know, just the fact that you have like access, you can build your own metering system all at once. And customize that to your taste is like, very, very I, nice. I used to go on, on WaveLab for a lot of these things, a lot of these things. Uh, I mean, all these meters that WaveLab has are still indispensable, if you ask me. Uh, mm. But like, uh, I think I, th I think even if we do like one video each, we s there's still going to be a lot of <laughs> things to talk about. The correlation meter, uh, the um, the one that basically shows you all the frequencies, uh, that's extremely useful because you can say it's the phase correlation, right? Was was that was that the question? Um, yeah, the question Ooh, was uh, there. You go. Uh, multi correlation. Yeah, so that basically it splits all the frequencies into bands, and then you can see if they're in phase or not. Uh, that not only it allows you to see how many things you have out of phase, but especially for the low end that you care mostly about, these things shouldn't be out of phase there. Otherwise, you're in trouble. And this is a like a hundred percent absolutely uh, reliably reliable way that you can say okay my low end is tight and there are mm. no phase issues and when you have a bass that plays different notes exactly. and uh, some of them might be out of phase then you might check your correlation meter say okay okay it, it went out of phase i have a problem there i have to tackle this um i think this is one of the most useful meters actually and cool. you can actually see if you have any samples in your uh, library like kick drum samples or bass samples that are out of phase. You'll be surprised. No, I, some you know, of them are. I don't have a hard time to believe that. 
Jesse is asking, how do you use UAD plugins if your Steinberg interface is connected? Because as far as I know, Steinberg let you use uh, only use one interface at a time. Um, so, so from what I understand is that you have two interfaces, one probably a uh, Apollo or something, and a Steinberg interface, um, or or maybe you or you just have like a satellite, which is only um, only good to manage the plugins. This is what I have on my side. So you know, if my satellite is uh, plugged in, I'm able to. It's going to be detected by uh, by uh, the UAD plugins, and I'm going to be able to work with them. Um, as far as using the DSP out of uh, an Apollo, for example, while working on another interface, I, I never tried it, so I don't know. So, um, any thoughts on that, uh, Dom? Uh, I think if you have another interface already, I would suggest that you go for the DSP cards that are not audio interfaces. They just give you the DSP chips yeah, in order like to I run have, these yeah. plugins. Uh, otherwise, you're just paying for things that you're not going to use, you know. Um, and if you have, like, if I had a, a, I don't know, an Apollo and I wanted to use a different interface, I, what I would probably do is I would sell the Apollo and get a nice a satellite. A, a, a satellite, yeah, yeah. I can't remember how they call it. Uh, I've resisted UAD for so long <laughs> that, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm trying not to take a look at, on their website because it's way too tempting. <laughs> Listen, I've been working with uh, UAD plugins since day one, you know, uh, since uh, 2003 when I first started. I, I started with the UAD1 DSP card. That was what I had at the time uh, because my mentor back in the day uh, was using those plugins. Um, and there wasn't a lot of plugins back then from UAD, but they were good, you know, so I just uh, kept on building up my plugin library with UAD, but I stopped buying them for for like maybe three, four years now. Um, not yeah. because they're not good, it's because it's a bit too expensive for my needs anyways. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that we have so many good plugins now with Cubase. Mm -hmm. Squasher. <laughs> <laughs> Please, VST Connect. In the Cubase 11, we have a too much latency. Thank you both. Um, VST Connect, now I didn't try it with Cubase 11, should work the same. Um, now it's hard to say. Now it's not something that I would gonna be able to to help you right away because you know, and like, I don't know how you set that up on your side. Um, you, it's something you need to check, you know? Because um, VST Connect is another beast. Uh, now, what is the latency you're talking about? You know, so because th of course there's going to be some latency because you're working with somebody else. So I don't know what you're uh, trying to achieve. Uh, I received question about VST Connect on people trying to perform together. You know, at the same time live, and we're getting latency. Yeah, th this is going to happen for sure. You will get latency. Um, so VST Connect is good for recording somebody else that is not in your studio. That's yeah. the main purpose of a tool like VST Connect. So I don't know what you're trying to achieve with it. So maybe you can clarify that. Yeah. And it's also depending on your uh, internet connection so much. Of so, course, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Ideally, I would say, you know, if you want to make sure that it's not an internet connection thing, just uh, try and use uh, an ethernet cable uh, and not Wi-Fi. Because Wi-Fi can be tricky, it, it, it relies on too many factors and for something that's real-time audio, uh, it, it, you need to kind of make sure that all the other aspects are covered and then check what's going on with VST Connect because, you know, uh, even on the Macs you can have like a dongle and, and connect an Ethernet cable and that might change things dramatically yeah. for you. We have yeah. uh, Rosika saying, oh my God, excellent duo. These guys are kings of Cubase. Uh, actually, the king of Cubase is not here with us. His name is Greg Ondo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then uh, we have uh, Scott asking, Chris, uh, Mixdown Online recommended saving your presets in 
Uh, okay, recommend saving your presets in 10.5 before upgrading to 11. Um, yes, yeah, Scott. <laughs> not sure I understand the question. I think he recommends saving the presets before oh, okay. uh, upgrading to 11. It, it is not a question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a comment. Thank you for your comments. Yeah. It's always good to save your... Uh, your stuff be before doing so, you know. But I do it manually. You know what, what I do is like I showed you earlier. I just copy the files over to the new folder for what I need to be transferred, and that's it. Like for me, it's the fastest way to do it. Um, okay, let me go back here. I think I lost count here. Uh, <laughs> man, there's so many questions, guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, don't forget to like. Okay, it's just you know, there's. Like 182 people watching right now, and we only have 36 likes. Come on, come on, just hit that like button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what about this one? Uh, uh, Scott again. Uh, perhaps uh, speak a bit to Spectra Layers 1. I've only played with it a bit, but works amazingly well. I actually played just a little bit with it. Also, uh, just removing that one vocal out of the mix, which actually was very, very impressive. Um, and I, I also took a look at uh, Spectre, uh, Spectre Layer 7. And, and I remember two years ago at NAMM, the, um, I forgot about his name. He's a French guy. He's the one behind Spectre Layers, I believe. And we had a chat and he showed me with, I think well, that was the first version or second version at the time. And ah man, you, well, like I was very impressed about how that works. It's a bit like Photoshop, where you see like you have a visual of your waveform and you can actually move things around. Um, so it's like a beast of its own, you know. So, um, but you've worked with it a lot, uh, Dom, if I'm not mistaken, with the oh, one version, uh, the one including uh, Cubase. The the one that comes in Cubase yeah. is, uh, I mean, for me, it's a a dream come true because uh, it's the one thing that you get asked over and over again. Oh, can can I have like uh, an instrumental, uh, or can you do a remix? And I'll give you the. I don't have the vocals, um, but the but the full version, the full version, is unreal. Like I'm telling you, it's for mastering. I mean, yeah, it does restoration and everything else, which is cool. But like literally. I once I had to use it for mastering to save like a very weak mix uh, where th there were some tom fields, but the tom fields were not loud enough. You couldn't even hear them, um, and the, the the client wanted you know I, I want these toms to be punchy. And then th there are two ways. And if before spectral as I have said, it's it's a mastering. It's not mixing, so there's not much we can do. But it's spectral layers. You can see your waveform in 3D mm. and with its frequency and everything. Uh, and like literally, you could see the toms. You could see them. They were just not too loud. So you take the brush, like Photoshop, you know, where you can add like saturation and uh, contrast and sharpness and all these things. So you get the brush. You find the things that you want to boost. It's OK. Just give me like 4 dB. <laughs> and then you paint. Literally paint. It's crazy. And that, like, it brought up just the toms. Like, because when you can, it, it, I think what they say is like, if you can see it, you can, you can tweak it. So you see the toms, and then you see these peaks and valleys, you know, and then you take a brush, and, and it, I, I can't, you know, the, uh, you know, they couldn't believe it when they heard back the results. Like, how, how did you, how did you do that? <laughs> and you know the, the trick was spectral layers. Like I couldn't have done it with anything else, no it's matter crazy, what I did. Man, it's it's amazing. I love technology. I know Th these guys are geniuses. Uh, the the guys that, that do spectral layers. Oh, yeah. I also had a chat with them at Nam. Uh, I think it was the same day, like you did. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> country C, uh, Country T, saying hello, hello, Andy, a very good friend. Um, he's down in California. Hi, good Andy. to see you, man. Uh, okay, then we have uh, okay. I have one from Eric. When using silence and very audio in the same region, the very audio edit resets. Do you have uh, do you have any solution? Silence. Oh, like like the the silence for um, the the function, the audio function silence, right? That you go audio silence. Is that Probably. it? Probably. I, I guess so. 
I think you can remedy this behavior on the preferences. You can, you know, that annoying thing that sometimes happens with Vari Audio, where uh, you know you try and change something on the on the actual audio, and it says, "Oh, do you want me to keep those edits, or yeah. do you want me to?" That's the the. I think that Eric, you've probably clicked on reset, and then it never asked you again. It, it you, you can find it on the on the actual settings it's inside in the preferences, preferences. Something you know. Let me check if I can find yeah. it. There's so uh, many things here. I know. <laughs> but okay, check it out. I'm just can continue uh, checking out. Yeah, the I think I think. Um, yeah, if you go to preferences vary audio, there are two options: inhibit warning when changing the sample data. I think that's probably what you want to untick. Yours will probably be ticked if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, or the second one, you know, just make sure that both of them they are unticked. It will give you that annoying pop up, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's uh, this pop up allows you to choose the behavior that you want but sometimes you might not want the same behavior over and over again yeah uh, then we have uh, base right um, to us both you probably covered the most important new tools however is there some improvements in the mix console or elsewhere that we don't know about yet uh, yeah there's of course little improvements all over the place as far as the mix console per se Nothing major, I don't think so. What yeah, not for uh, not no, for the mixing console. The the uh, per se, uh, I I would say the when it comes to mixing, yeah, I think the uh, supervision and the plugins are the big things. Yeah, uh, exactly. Honestly, but, uh, guys, I, apart from moving the channels around, I know everybody has been asking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else you would like. <laughs> to see on the mix console let us know uh because i honestly i i find it hard to harder and harder to find things that could be implemented in the mix console you know i uh, i i'd like ms on every channel but that's a little bit too much that's my thing for that, that's my thing dual mono and you know converting a uh, stereo channel to mono right away by one click um but you know this is a bit more complicated than in, than it seems anyways yeah, yeah. Um, uh, then and uh, for me, for mid side, you can do WaveLab anyway. If uh, yeah. you know, for mastering and all these things. But you know, um, we're talking about little details. For the most part, Cubase is the number yeah. one DAW, in my opinion. That's why I've been working with Cubase for the last seventeen years. <laughs> and I tried, to, I, I, and I and I and I worked also on Pro Tools. I mixed uh, maybe two, three albums using Pro me Tools too. only, which works me great too. for mixing, recording in Pro Tools. Like for me, editing in Pro Tools, like a lot of people love editing in Pro Tools. Like they're fanatics with Pro Tools when it comes to editing. I never was able to edit in Pro Tools properly. Um, but that might only be my problem, to be honest. Uh, but you know, so it's don't, like don't as far as so. editing goes, it does, uh, it is like very different than the approach that Cubase has. So it's completely two different things. But Pro Tools is super good on the editing side, even if I'm, you know, if I can, even if I cannot relate to it, it is a powerful tool as far as editing goes and it works great with mixing, uh, but just, just not but you know, Chris, that's that's the thing that I appreciate uh, about you, and I think that's one of the things that I, I always stress when I'm talking about oh, which which one is the best DAW, you know? And people say oh, you know, um, most of the times when people say the best DAW is this X DAW, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever, whatever, it's you find that 99% of the time, in in my experience, right? they haven't used anything else. Mm, yeah. uh, I've used Pro Tools for like seven years of my life. Logic, the same, maybe not so much, maybe five years. Ableton, I've used it as well for, for various projects. Um, you know, in, in studios that I used to work for, we had pro uh, sessions from all kinds of DAWs, maybe apart from Studio One that wasn't very popular uh, back in the day, uh, and, and maybe Reaper, you know. Uh, mm. But most of the times when people say, oh, you know what, uh, Cubase, mm, no, uh, this DAW is better. Okay, when was the last time you checked out Cubase? And they always say Cubase 5. And we know yeah. why. 
uh, and uh, or sometimes they say, oh, you know, it doesn't have this, and you're like, well, actually, it it has this since version five years ago, you know, and you're like, okay, so you you haven't really tried it. How can how can how can you go out publicly or you know promote that? Okay, this is something that you know is better than the other thing when you haven't tried anything else. That's, that really gets me on my nerve. When I see people doing that, I get upset, you know? Yeah, no, no, I know what you mean. Rant, you know, minus rant. But you've used Pro Tools and you're still yeah. talking about QPACE, you know? it's um, Yeah, but, but like uh, for my needs, you know, it, it just works very well. Because you know, I, I love to work absolutely. with the DAW that is good at everything, you know? MIDI for composing and writing music to recording to mixing, you know, like I can do everything properly and very well. It has like amazing tools on all those different stages of music production. This is something that I like a lot with Cubase, you know, like Pro Tools is great for editing, for recording and mixing, but when it comes to media and composing, it's not the best, you know, and even Pro Tools users are going to admit that, you know, um, and same yeah. for other platforms that is probably not going to be the best for mixing music like Ableton, but for MIDI and stuff like that, you know, composing and stuff or for EDMs, like one of the best platforms out there, you know. So it depends of what you're looking for. Um, I was looking for something and this is why I stayed on Cubase because I needed something that was good on all stages and aspects of music production. It's personal. It's yeah, personal. It is. It is. Uh, and uh, I don't think that anyone would argue that, uh, you know, something like Ableton uh, you know, that doesn't excel at uh, live performance and uh, all those cool things that all these amazing artists do with Ableton. You know, they go and play and create uh, full sets. Yeah, uh, Cubase doesn't doesn't care to do it. Doesn't it doesn't it doesn't do that. It's not what it's designed for. No. But w when it comes to mixing or MIDI editing, MIDI production, all these things, come on, let's get real. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to, you know, to talk and, you know, I, I love Logic as well. I, I use Logic uh, and it's it's really nice, but yeah, uh, come on. <laughs> then we have Todd asking, anyway. hi guys, does Cubase 11 allow audio war war uh, war warping, man, my French, audio warping multiple tracks at once? Nah, it doesn't. No, that's my request as well. It's yeah, yeah I've received that re request for especially from drummers like Todd and myself. Yeah, that would be very useful. Um, and then we have um, Pele Blue Dot. Uh, thank you for the tip. Um, yeah, feel free to uh, to use super chat and pay for my coffee. Yeah, I would appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, so can you explain how to use the new uh, multi-correlation uh, meter and other supervision features? We actually talked about that um, maybe 15, 20 minutes ago um, about how to use that. Um, like, you know, supervision is that plugin that I, I really like. You know, I used to work with Span. This is usually what I, what I use for... Uh, for a graphic, uh, as a graphic analyzer plugin. And uh, the, the cool thing about supervision is that you have like access to way more than just one graphic analyzer. You have like a bunch of different stuff from LUFS metering, peak metering, um, the graphic analyzer, of course, and correlation and so on, you know. So you can actually customize those to your taste. And all those modules, there is a, because I don't have it in front of me, but there is a setting option that you can click on and that will give you all the, par the parameters of each of the modules when they are selected. So something to check. So I hope that helps and uh, check what Dom was saying earlier also on the replay because this video is going to stay on my YouTube channel. Um, then what else we have? Benjamin, there's a lot of questions Dom. I hope you're not on a rush. <laughs> <laughs> but feel free if if you are, let me know. You know, so if uh, no, 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 I, need you, I know you're a busy guy. Um, do you know if uh, there's some improvements on the media bay like uh, AI search instead of name tagging? I don't think there mm. is. No, I think media bay has been untouched for the past two versions, as far as I remember. I think there are some cosmetic changes, some uh, search uh, functions. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe a media bay would be something that I'd like to see some uh, new features. You know, I don't know. Good, That's a good, good point. Good to see, Mandy. Good to see Mandy. She's been commenting on my video, so I'm very uh, happy to see a woman on my channel. There's a lot of men out there Yay! that are commenting, so not a lot of women. So it's very cool that uh, that uh, you are here with us on this live stream. Um, Pablo, love this guy. Where are all the nice girls? See, man. Where are all the girls? Hey, Pablo. <laughs> yeah, we need more Where girls. Where are you girls? Why are you hiding? I'm pretty sure that many, uh, you know, there there are so many female, uh, you know, Cubase users, uh, and talented yeah. one also. Um, we should okay. have. I, I think that it's it's time that we should have a female uh, YouTuber. Of course. Uh, you know, doing like not only Cubase stuff. I mean, but there, but Cubase as well. Yeah, why not? You know, come on. <laughs> Um, okay, hi guys. George is asking, uh, where do you groove? Uh, where do groove agents uh, user kits save? Kits made C10. Kits made C uh, Cubase 10.5 didn't transfer over. Uh, you can actually. You know what? I had the same problem. I solved this with the um, uh, straight into the uh, the plugin manager. And just redirected the uh, uh, the VST folder straight from there. Oh, the the user kits. Okay. They mm. were stored. I. I and now it depends have, if you're on Mac or Windows. That's another thing. Yes. Uh, but they should be most of the times uh, at uh, your username. If you're on on PC then it will be your username and then on documents steinberg and let me find them uh well 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 well, well. let me see uh it, it it really depends on where i i said i tend to always save them in, in uh, different places so that i have them and i also export the samples um let me find. I don't have any presets, unfortunately, I, I, because I export them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's. It, but try the Steinberg uh, folder on your Documents folder. It could be there. But from your user folder, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it just 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 so that you don't have these problems, it might be a good idea to get into the habit of you know you create a drum kit, export it with the samples. You know, that's always, uh, you know, a okay. good uh, practice. I, I misread. I thought he was talking about the instrument itself. Because I had that, you know, when I first loaded uh, Cubase 11, um, Groove Vagent wasn't there, and also uh, Halion, and a Alien Sonic also was ah, not there. So I just need to redirect it. The, uh, I just need uh, to... That, um, that's, that's uh, that for everyone else that might be having issues uh, the library Noir is not there or Retrolog is not there. When mm -hmm. you go to the uh, uh, Steinberg Download Assistant, now now you will ask, some people will ask why. Now you have all these different uh, downloads, right? You have Cubase, the application, and then you have Groove Agent SE, you have Retrolog, you have Patch Shop, the Patch Shop content, all these things. If you want to install the full Cubase, you have to download all of them and install all of them. Otherwise, things are not going to show up. Exactly. Uh, the reason why uh, this happened was because many people were complaining that, ah, Cubase is too heavy, I need to install 25 gigs of material, and my laptop has 20, uh, 100 gigs of space. So why do, you, how do I have to do this? So now, um, I think that these people are going to be happy because now you can just install Cubase and nothing else. And that's it. But ev everyone else will have to just click a few times. That's minor inconvenience. But if you don't do it, I realize it's a completely different procedure, so you might get things wrong. That's I didn't what, have you know, Noir, I, I, for example. On, on my side, you know, I just installed Cubase. So I just needed to redirect the, the, uh, the VST folder where my uh, all of my other uh, virtual instruments were located, which is not on the C drive in my case. So I just needed to go into Plugin Manager and just uh, add this folder on, and that's it. And then the next time around, QB is going to scan everything and you're going to be good to go. So that's uh, honestly, I think it's a good feature. The fact that you don't need to re-download everything. So 
Yeah, I think many people were complaining. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you you can never make everyone happy. Uh, but I know that some people just didn't want to install like the hip hop loops. They didn't. They didn't. They don't do hip hop. They do rock music. So why do I have to install like two gigs of uh, hip hop loops? I don't want them. Um, it is what exactly. it is. You, yeah. It's... So a lot of uh, perspective. Uh, Chris, latest mixing course is tops. Thank you very much. Uh, you uh, you all got to check it out. Uh, yeah. The Right now, the course is closed to new students, but I'm going to reopen the course sometime in 2021. So very happy that you are uh, satisfied with the course. Uh, then I have Andy is, uh, who is asking, I noticed that Chris uses the high pass filter most of the time over using the actual EQ to cut the mud. Can you explain why? Um, to cut the mud, no, to cut the mud, I would, I w I'm going to probably use an EQ just to, to it's, and mud is going to, mainly going to be present at around 200 to 250 uh, hertz, you know, 250 hertz or so usually, you know. Uh, when I use uh, high pass filtering, it's mainly to to cut off any rumbles and stuff that can introduce itself into the signal even if you not if you do not hear it. And I kind of like to clean the 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 low end for low bass frequencies like you know like the bass or kick drum and stuff so i would i like to leave that space for those instruments and when i use high pass filtering i again do not go crazy it's going to depend on the instrument i'm adding the high pass filter on sometimes it's going to go up to 100 hertz sometimes 50 sometimes 200 you know in some occasions it depends on what i'm working on um and of course yeah it, it's also related to mud as well if you clean the low end low end also can add mud uh, on uh, on higher frequencies, you know, near the um, uh, 200 and 250 hertz. Um, so so there's two reasons. Yeah. So the main reason why I do use high pass filters is to avoid having some low rumble that is not part of the sound of some instruments that are going to build up uh, during the mixing stage and can actually reduces the dynamic range also of uh, your final mix. Uh, so and just to leave space to all those instruments. And yeah, of course, it's going to influence also, it's going to affect the muddiness of uh, some instruments. I hope that helps. Okay, let's go to the next one. Why Scale Assistant does not play the uh, AB key in C minor? Um, I think you asked the question on one of my videos. I, I forgot, if, or somebody else asked the same question. And that one is for Don. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it depends on the uh, minor scale that you set. What uh, minor scale you set? Is it the harmonic? Is it the... Uh, I can't remember how Cubase names them. There are so many, you know... Uh, uh, how, let, me, let me see. Uh, are you using, for example... Let me try and uh, see what it calls them. Because the thing is, uh, there are many C minor scales, you know. Uh, there is the classical, you know, what you, we, we use in classical music that does have the A flat. Uh, there's the natural, there's the harmonic, the melodic. Which one are you using? If you use the wrong, um, uh, you know, type, then it won't trigger, it won't let you trigger the A flat. It will trigger the A natural. Try the different uh, scales, um, and uh, see which one you should use. I'm, I'm, I can't remember how we call them. Let me see in Cubase. Um, yeah, scale assistant, and yes, yeah, C. Yeah, natural. That's. Are, are you using the, the the natural, for example? I'm not sure which one you're using. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, natural should have it. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah, I mean, it's it, and for me, as, as a classical musician, I always think with the classical scales, you know, mm. you go up with the tritone, uh, and uh, sorry, with uh, you know, um, the um, um, you know, it should be A flat and then B natural, uh, normally, and then you go back like this. Or if you have a melodic, it would be like A flat, B flat, and then you go back with uh, all the naturals. Anyway, it's kind of geeky, so. <laughs> so 
let me jump on the next one. Like we have like a bunch of other questions. It's crazy. So I'm going to try to answer them quick. Let's um, bring the next one. The Chris and Dom, I know many engineers are saying that MV2 is a must. Would you consider making a video about how Squasher compares to the Waves MV2? Or better, how to replace it? That's a good question. I use, I work with MV2. I love it. And uh, now we just, uh, we just, uh, Cubase has uh, offers us the new Squasher plugin, which I'm going to dive into. Um, so yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. We can actually work on that. Um, and then well, let's. Very good that. idea, indeed. Okay. Uh, tell Steinberg that we need a feature in Cubase which is moving tracks right and left. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we mentioned that before. Uh, then the mix down online not mentioned as the new API from supporting hardware that will bring new support for hardware controllers. Thanks for the info. Because again, that wasn't a question. Okay, let's go to this one. Hi, Chris and Dom. Is it possible? Uh, is it possible you're able to let us know if an update is scheduled for Nuendo uh, 10.3 soon? Actually, Nuendo 11 is on. Is almost coming out. I think I, I just saw an ad about that yesterday. I think so. Um, it's going to be anytime soon, I believe. Is it possible to? Uh, is it possible to determine? Determinate which one uh, or more functions about the key of a reference song dragged into Cubase. I'm not sure I understand the mm, question. Uh, with one or more functions about the key of a reference song dragged into Cubase. Um, as audio? That I assume so. Uh, Good one. Mm, apart from your ears, I don't think right now uh, because the thing is, oh, there's a there's a there's a way that you could probably do it if it has vocals. If your song has vocals, you know what we could do? You could uh, extract the vocals with uh, Spectral Layers One, uh, open them into Vari Audio, uh, extract the MIDI notes, and then the scale assistant, the new scale assistant, can tell you what uh, key it is. If you have vocals, if you don't have vocals, you know what? I've tried some apps um, that claim to find the chords for your songs that you drag into them, and uh, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're we're there yet with AI. I, I think that it, we're very close though. Like what Melodyne does with polyphonic uh, mm -hmm. detection is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that Melodyne could probably do it somehow, but I, I wouldn't expect like miracles. Like uh, I think uh, finding the right course for your song still requires a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, practice and, you know, try and learn to train your ear and see if you can hear the bass notes at least first and then determine how you can figure out the, the top notes of the chord. Uh, I, I would say if you, I, I, the the best piece of advice I can give is you know just try and uh, train your ear so that you can even with the help of a keyboard you know uh, figure out what notes the bass plays at least you know play along with it and see does it agree with what I'm playing on the keyboard you know cr choose a bass instrument like I don't know electric bass or you know whatever trillion whatever you use and see if you can get the notes right if you find the bass. You're 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 at a good start, you know, if that makes sense. Um. Cool. Bass rack, uh, bass rack is asking. Uh, I had to disagree with you, Dom. So he disagrees with you on Windows 10 plus Cubase. Um, I'd go better performance on Windows 7, even though uh, Win 10 is okay. Yeah, like like I said, you know, this is. It depends on your system, you know. I I had like. Because I was lucky enough to have uh, both computers at the same time, because I was upgrading, and I was about to sell my previous computer, I, I, there was an overlap. So I had both of them because I had to still work, and I had the new one, and I was installing things, and I tried the same projects on both uh, both Windows and I, uh, like seven and ten, mm. 
And from my experience, you know, 10 were just uh, blowing it out of the park. You know, latency, stability, uh, the way that windows were handled, the, the, the resizing options were much better than at 7 because I work on two 4K monitors, so that's important for me. Uh, and less uh, DPC spikes on Windows. But again, like that's the one thing with Windows that we have to admit, you can never be sure. Whatever works for me doesn't mean that it will work that's for the Chris thing. Yeah, exactly. uh, or it will work for anyone else. It's not, it's not a Mac. That's what the Apple sells for the Macs. Yeah. So, My good well, friend from Toronto is asking, do you recommend Loop Deck or best to wait for next gen? Ah. Uh, I have it here. You, you have it. I don't have it. I, I need to put my hands on that. That's the it one. It looks so cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks yeah. very cool. Um, okay, that's a question I get a lot on the comments, to be honest with you. And uh, I always say that uh, give me a little bit of time, give me a little bit of time. There's a good reason. Uh, it's the, the Loop Deck is super cool. I love it, but I use it mainly for uh, Lightroom and for Final Cut Pro and editing videos. This is fantastic, especially for Lightroom. is amazing. Mm. Uh, for Cubase, uh, it's 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 it's. How much do you rely on shortcuts? You know, if you know shortcuts, you will find that sometimes you might be quicker. Uh, with shortcuts that rather than this exactly this you know what I like about this that you have the scroll thing here uh, And I like these guys with these ones you can go zoom in zoom out and all these things and this you can customize it completely because these are all like uh, touch sensitive keys, but you know what will make a big difference for this when they include MIDI and That's what I'm waiting for You know that's I, I don't think it's fair to do a review uh, until they have everything, um, you know, in place, because it's not going to be the right thing to do. So that's the reason. Just to give you a little bit of non-disclosure, uh, <laughs> yeah, what's behind the scenes. But I like it. It's a really nice, uh, and it looks amazing. It does. Yeah. Marc Delaurier uh, is asking: Is there a way to tap a rhythm for the chord track to play? Um. I don't think chord, so. Uh, chord pads. Use the chord pads. Maybe that's what he meant. Yeah. I mean, if you if you use chord pads, you can uh, select your chords that you want to use, and then you can trigger them on your keyboard yeah. with any rhythm that you want. And exactly. um, I have a video about this if you want to check it out, if you haven't. Uh, but that's, uh, in my head, chord track is a static thing for you to have a reference of, OK, I'm on an A minor. Yeah, I, I do. I have like a suspended chord or something like this, but and also for vario audio, of course, for uh, choirs and all these things, for harmonies uh, and all all these things. But chord pads is the animated version of chord tracks. So if you haven't tried chord pads, uh, yeah, you 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 will love it. But maybe I'm completely missing the point here. Okay, let me check. Uh, Curious player, the sounding of, a se of the session we hear uh, within Cubase is amazing, but the same mix down to wave does not sound as big. Is there the same? F is is it the same for everyone? So meaning that you don't have the same sound, sound. or when you export a mix. Is that, do I understand that correctly? Not sure, but probably. Yeah, if so, you just, you know, just elaborate a bit more. But usually when you bounce a mix, what you're hearing is what you're gonna bounce, usually. Unless you have like maybe a plugin or something that is, I don't know, um, stuck on your master bus. Um, like for that happened to me before. Before I was using the uh, the control room for reference plugins, like Sonarworks. That Sonarworks plugin was used to be on my uh, master uh, master output. And if you forget to bypass that plugin when you bounce, you're screwed. So that's one example. So um, let me go. I'm gonna go fast, guys, because we need to wrap this one up uh, very very soon. 
Wow, it's one hour and ten minutes already. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Wow. Can we safely delete the previous version install installation folders? Uh, I really don't like that Cubase creates a different folder for every version I've bought. Um, yeah, you can if you don't need like the old version, you can. But you know, they, they, the the what is going to take the most of the space are all the samples, the VC plugins, and stuff. You know, Cubase like the software itself is not going to take a lot. Um, so just make sure you don't delete and don't get rid of all the um, all the VST instruments and you know, all the um, the data, you know, the audio loops and all that stuff. This is what takes a lot of space. Yeah, I would Usually. try to un un uninstall rather than delete the folders mm -hmm. um, necessarily. Just and, and do a backup before you do anything just in case, Elaine. You know, it's... Uh, just saying, uh, but it's safe. I've uh, removed some old version of Cubase from uh, from my uh, system because you know sometimes the biggest problem that I have sometimes I click on the wrong version because the icon is always the same. So I'm like, oh no, that's nine point five prehistoric times. You know, um, I, I cannot go back to ten. By the way, at ten point five now, it's uh, I'm completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's is asking, hello, Chris and Don, please please explain how we can use macros in Cubase. Uh, I am on Cubase 11. Um, now, this is going to be too long to start talking about macros here on the live stream. However, Dom actually made a very cool video not too long ago, maybe a month or a month and a half ago, where it's a d look for, uh, do a search on um, on Dom's um, YouTube channel for DSing or DS or vocal, vocal DSing, and you're going to find how we can use a macro. Uh, to just remove those uh, those S's, which is quite cool. And I actually took your uh, your macro, customized it a bit to uh, to work uh, some some similar stuff, you know, in my uh, uh, while editing, which is very practical. So thanks a lot, man. So go watch this video. And I did also maybe a year and a half ago or something made a video on macros. Um, and I had Greg Ondo on uh, when we met, when we first met at, uh, was it AES, I think, two years ago, and he actually shared something with macros. Macros are powerful, you know, they're going to take all of your key commands and you can like combine a bunch of key commands all together with one shortcut, which is great. Um, but yeah, something else. This is, again, something that I need to, <laughs> to do a bit more. Uh, then uh, let's go down here and... Uh, Uh, okay, Dom, the sounding session within Cubase is amazing, but the same... Okay, we... Ah, oh, it's the same one, yeah. It's the same one, okay. There is Cubase... Uh, there is a Cubase more onto pop rock orchestral than EDM and new pop dance. Uh, I think Cubase is good for anything you... All genre of music, in my opinion. It's not, like, necessarily designed for one specific genre. Yeah, totally. So guys, we are gonna finish this one up. We're gonna wrap things up, uh, answering just a couple more questions, and this is gonna be it for us today. So, Angelina is asking, hi, nice to see you both. Uh, I bought Cubase Pro 11 update, but download assistant will not let me log in or download update. I was able to activate an e-sensor, uh, e-licensor, any suggestions? Is this related to the bug that uh, Steinberg had at first with uh, the servers? Well, I think you 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 could still log in. Uh, I mean, it, it might sound a little bit stupid, but uh, most people, bear in mind, myself included, <laughs> we forget our password for uh, um, my Steinberg, you know, and that's the password that you have to use. Uh, and I know it because I did the same mistake. I tried to activate and then uh, all of a sudden the Steinberg download assistant said, oh, we need your password and your email. I'm like, what password and email do I have to use there? Yeah. I don't remember. So I had to go on my you know, uh, app where I save all my passwords and, and find which one, it, because most of the times if you're using a browser like Chrome, it, it will have it there and you don't, you never have to type it. So even, I, I do like activations and uh, stuff all the time. I, I don't know my password for my Steinberg. And now th this is required if you want to download anything from, uh, you know, any installers. 
She's so saying I don't that know. It's not, the, it's not the case. Um, it's not the case. Uh, and even now, it doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't still let you log in. That's what I understand. Apart from a password reset straight on my Stangberg, I don't know what to uh, to add to this. So, sorry about that. Um, please, uh, currently I have a UR22 interface and I want to get a Behringer Model D desktop version. What would be the best way to set this up and can you trigger uh, Can you trigger it with MIDI notes uh, like a VST synth? I don't know what the Behringer Model D is, so uh, I'm not uh, going to be able to mm -hmm. answer that. I don't know about you, but... Um, um. Yeah, I could, uh, uh, what would be the best way to set it up and can trigger with me? Oh, um, I think the Model D has uh, has some uh, MIDI I.O. Uh, so uh, you would basically connect it to your, uh, your 22 has MIDI. So take a MIDI out, connect it to the MIDI in of your Model D and then I think it doesn't have a keyboard, so you need to trigger this using either the key editor, you know, just input some notes, or use um, any MIDI keyboard, and then you can play it like a uh, VSTI. Uh, and of course, you have to record audio because it's not. A Scott actually is uh, answering uh, by saying that the model D can have MIDI over USB. Oh, it's, it's uh, MIDI over USB. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't just plug sure it into it your PC via USB. So there you go. Thank you, Scott. Oh, Appreciate great. the answer. Scott. Do you have it, uh, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> or do you just know? <laughs> uh, we have uh, Hany who is saying that he's a Cubase tutor himself. Uh, I teach in Arabic language, LOL. <laughs> Good to see you here, my friend. Actually, I don't speak Arabic, but my family is from Egypt. So this is why I have... Uh, my last name is Salim, even if Salim is Turkish, from what I understand. So I get a lot of comments every week. I think maybe like once every two weeks, I'm going to have that comment. Are you Turk? Uh, are you Turkish? So no, I'm not. <laughs> but my dad was born in Egypt. So, you know, that explains it. Um, then we have a PS, the video of the macros. Is that on Dom's? Okay, it's on his personal. Oh, is it on personal? Yeah, it's on this Dom. Sorry. It's on Dom's personal YouTube channel for the macro video on the Essing vocals. It's been released maybe a month or a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Something like that. Um, I'm going to leave the link below. Okay, I'm going to try not to forget to leave the link. So, all right, guys, so I think I'm going to have to wrap this one up. Okay, I'm very happy you guys came. I uh, came here. It was uh, very cool. Like 200 people are watching right now. Hit the like button on your way out, please. That helps the channel a lot. Uh, um, thank you, Dom, for being here. We're going to do this Thanks, uh, Chris. again for sure. Uh, if Absolutely. you're not subscribed to Dom's uh, channel, um, just look for Dom Sigalas. He's all over the place. Uh, he's the one behind most of the Steinberg's videos anyways, so you cannot miss his face. Um, I'm going to leave the link <laughs> down below anyways. Oh, um, and and, <laughs> and if you want to have a, a close-up version of his face, just watch my last video, and that will do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. So, all well, right, well, guys. Man. So, thanks again for showing up. Again, click the like button. I'm going to see you on the next video, which is going to come out tomorrow. Um, I actually used this microphone, the BB29 from Jay Z microphone, to record a song, micing the drum kit, an acoustic drum with one microphone and vocal and everything else to just record one full song. Stamps are going to be available for you to download starting tomorrow. So, watch this one out uh, videos coming up tomorrow until next time guys take care and see you soon thanks again bye 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 guys <laughs>